everybody, you're watching Michigan Farmer 421. I'm Clyde, and today we are discussing our common swap costs. And boom, we are at my computer. Actually, you are seeing my desktop right there. Uh, actually, no. Hold on. Right there. Uh, I am using my Elgato HD60 Pro, and uh, we are going to record using my desktop today because my camera battery is dead and it'll be easier to do our calculations on cost and uh, what brands I went with and uh, yeah so a little bit of a disclaimer here all Cummins swaps are different so if you're putting a Cummins into a uh, 08 2010 or 60 that's gonna cost a little bit more money considering that's a lot of more computer stuff so you're gonna have maybe a little bit more headaches there um, but with my OBS Ford, I, uh, it's all mechanical, so it was pretty easy just to adapt stuff. But, um, yeah, so we're going to start off with what the Cummins did cost. Uh, Cummins did cost, I'm going to point to it right here. Uh, Cummins did cost around $1,200. I bought it off of, uh, I didn't buy it off Craigslist. I had to go buy it in person. But I found it on Craigslist. Um, he posted it, but it'd be like two days, and I was on it right away. Um. So I got the whole engine for twelve hundred. Um, it came with alternator, a bunch of stuff that I didn't need, but it came with. So I could have made money off of those parts, but I decided not to, considering they're pretty old and rusty. So I picked that up for twelve hundred. Um, I'm gonna put that on my calculator here. We're gonna slide it right over. Uh, that was twelve hundred dollars. Uh, pretty reasonable, considering most comments go for three thousand to five thousand dollars. So I got a steal on there. Um, but I was shopping for a while and doing all of my planning and blueprint ahead of time. So now we are going to move on to what brands I bought my uh, parts from. I got some from Summit, uh, US Shift, Diesel Conversion Specialist, Industrial Injection. And um, we're going to start off with actually Summit. Summit, I got the flexible uh, radiator hose. And the uh, exhaust system ended up being uh, $360 ish around that price. Um, I'm actually really happy with the exhaust. It's a Diamond Eye performance, um, but it was actually a really, really easy to install. Uh, we added flex pipe onto that too, which I believe was $75. But uh, we do have pieces left over from the exhaust we could use in other places. That is all the parts I ordered from Summit. The next one we have is uh, US Shift. Uh, this is where I got my transmission uh, tuner, controller, computer, programmer. Uh, you decide what name it wants. Uh, it also came with a wiring harness. I could have ordered this from Diesel Conversions, um, but they uh, didn't have my right wiring harness because I had two different year plugs on them. So I had the Quick 4, which just the controller itself was around 585 and then um, the wiring harness was 150 because they make their own wiring harnesses using Ford OEM plugs. Um, and then uh, I got a slit loop kit to protect all the wiring and it was all measured out. And uh, that was uh, pretty, pretty nice. And um, with all those, that total came up to 762. Of course, there is shipping involved here, so shipping is going to be different. depends on where you live from these companies. Um, so that's in Ohio. Uh, U.S. shifts in South Carolina, um, but yeah. So the next one, actually, we are going to jog down to Industrial Injection, all the way down here with their nice new logo. Um, I have two parts I ordered off of this website. One's a hat that's not considered a part. Uh, this hat is from Industrial Injection. Let me turn it right here. It's pretty nice. Um, that you, if you don't want to order that, that is not being added to the cost. Um, I had to get a fuel shut off solenoid because. The uh, Cummins was, uh, the one on the Cummins just took off. It was for the VE pump for the 1989 to 93 uh, Dodge Cummins, the one that, so the first gen. Um, so I had to get that. That was around $40, um, but with uh, shipping and stuff, it came out to around $60-ish. And now we have a uh, diesel conversion specialist, which is um, got a lot of parts on here that uh, we had to customize ourselves. But um, at least 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll mention the parts on here. I'm trying to find my ink pen so I can go down the list. We have the uh, flex plate, the adapter plate, um, the engine mounts, the sensor adapters, tachometer kit, which that is a funny story because um, it has a Ford Power Stroke. Uh, I think it's a Power Stroke. I don't know what sensor fits off the gas, but it is a Ford Motorcraft sensor, so it's not like some autometer sensor. So that's pretty nice. Um, alternator brackets. A thermostat housing. That was not necessary, but I decided to get that anyway. Air intake kit um, for the 73 diesel, although that is from the 99 to 03, so we had to do some customization there. And then uh, there was shipping and handling. It also came with an installation manual, which was free. Um, but uh, all of these parts are uh, built heavy duty. Um, they use very thick gauge steel on the engine mounts. Um, shipping and handling was around $230, and these guys are out of Kyle's spell. I hope that's how I know it's pronounced. But that cost was $2,672.55. Um, and these parts are amazing. Um, I'll, the thermostat I did not need because of the way my radiator hoses were already going to be set up. Um, but the upper was actually for the lower radiator hose, but we decided not to go that route. Um, change of plans. But um, that part, if you already have that, you won't need it. But um, I needed it, and that's why it's going to be on my total. Everybody's total is going to be different. But uh, yeah, so that's all the parts I got from these companies here. I'm going to go back here. Um, there are many of the receipts I have to go through yet. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a long video. Uh, I got had to get the tr moving on to the transmission. I had to get the transmission rebuilt. Um, it was the E four O D, of course. Um, it had the upgraded ninety five to ninety seven. Um, the solenoids, I believe, is what it's called. So, um, but that cost was around twenty six hundred at first, but then I had to take it back because I broke it and put eight hundred on. Um, eight hundred dollars more, but. Rebuilt transmissions are going around that price right now. Um, of course, it always helps if you do it locally. It's always cheaper. Um, so, yeah. And then for the drive shaft to go from the transfer case to the uh, axle, um, side note here, we didn't do anything to the transfer case besides redo the fluid. Um, just because we weren't planning on using four-wheel drive a lot, but we decided to redo the fluid. There was almost no fluid in it, so we decided to redo it while we were at it. And then um, try to uh, do minimum breakdowns in the future. So we are redoing differential fluids and everything on like that. But from a uh, DTS drive trans specialist, actually I can put this up here. That's their logo. Um, they uh, got me a new, almost a new shaft besides the one end because someone dropped it. It wasn't me because I didn't drop it. But um, needed a new end yoke. And I think the only thing from the original shaft was from the back of the transfer case to the thing. And those totals on there was 217. This is plus. There we go. Calculator is a little funky sometimes. But... Those two businesses are located in Ionia, Michigan. Actually, they're almost across the street from each other. So, again, it's easier to do it locally because of uh, ease, and uh, they're really nice people. So, now we're going to move on from the salvage yard. Um, we're going to do Maple Rapids auto parts first of what I got from there. Um, I do not recommend these people at the slightest. Uh, shop locally. I didn't mean shop locally as in a shady place that charges you way too much. Uh, they took advantage of my age and I looked it up later and these used parts were like half of what they offered me. Um, just let's say this. They ain't getting my business again unless I go there with someone else and they tell them what I want. But um, I had to get the uh, 6 foot pedal. I got it off of a 06 uh, Power Stroke. Um, and I paid around $50 for that. I also got some other stuff on here, um, like the transmission cooler that I did not end up using. Um, but I got rid of that, and then I had some emblems on here. Um, I will subtract the other totals off of this um, at the end, and it'll show what my base price is for just the conversion. But um, that's what I got from that salvage yard. And then um, I did break my... Uh, uh, starter 
housing bracket, so I had to get another starter housing bracket, which was off of another starter. So I have six old starter parts, like starter solenoid parts and stuff. So that was another 50 from uh, Travers Auto. Uh, those guys are very helpful. They had it to me pretty quick. But um, yeah, so we're going to now move on to our big stack of uh, parts store. There's actually quite a lot here. Parts store receipts. Um, the trans oil cooler hose, hose, I had to get for the oil cooler, and we got clamps. Um, I had to get these two or three times. So the first one was 51. Point seventy seven plus and then I had to get two things more common five. Uh, one was Vaveline, which was more expensive. And then um I think yeah, I got power steering fluid on this receipt. If I can't see these. Um, I also got had to go get more trans oil cooler hose, which was uh, fifty nine two two and that I also had to get uh, a relay and more hose connectors the one relay is for an electric fan um, that relay was twenty four dollars um, I had to get another case what is this Mercon 5 this is the better deal on the uh, transmission fluid uh, that was sixty seven point five seven um, and then uh, I had to get a belt tensioner for the Cummins because it sat for two years and uh, it was squeaking pretty bad. It's 1989, so it's over 30 years old, almost 30 years old now. Um, and that thing, uh, I gotta watch it here. That thing was around $97. Everything, all these prices could vary depending on your area. Um, yeah, so don't like expect to have this exact number when you do yours. Because um, they vary, and you can get better deals. Um, like, if you're going to a parts store, sign up for the rewards program, because you will get so many points, it is ridiculous. So, yeah, I uh, got one receipt here for uh, flexible tubing for wiring. That was $6. Um, that's not necessary, but I wanted to clean up my wiring. And um, I kind of also want to know my total of what I spent on the truck on this conversion. Um, I got two electric fans from O'Reilly's. That was a bad deal as well. I should have went to CarQuest or Napa. Uh, but these were the only ones that had them in stock. I wasn't in a hurry, but I decided I needed to get them right away for some reason. I don't know if I was trying to mass build or something. Those were uh, 212 after taxes. They were like two cents off from like 211.98, but we'll roast round up for now. Um, let's see. We're going to go into our CarQuest ones now. We got quite a few here. I went to two CarQuest stores, and they uh, both have very different pricing. I'll say that. Um, so for the starter, the starter was let's see here, a hundred and forty-four dollars. Uh, I had no core return on it, which was kind of disappointing. But um, now, if I need to replace it, it'll be cheaper because I think what. What was the core cost on that? Core was eleven dollar charge, so I could have got eleven dollars off if I did that right. But I didn't. So um, I also got all new filters for the truck while I was at it. Um, I also got more electrical wiring. I'm looking at this receipt right now. Um, I got uh, butt connectors and markers, but I also t ended up taking where are those LED ones at. 14, so this receipt was around 65 after taking the uh, connectors off or lights off because I was going to get lights for the hood holes, but that was, just seemed like a bad idea at the time, so I decided not doing it. Um, so we also had to make our power steering hose, uh, which is just a hydraulic hose with power steering uh, fittings. Hopefully it will never blow. Uh, the first one I did, I just cut off the forward and slid on the... Uh, the uh, Dodge fitting because it came with the power steering pump. It blew apart right away. That's how much PSI is on there. Uh, just don't be under there when you first start it. All of that cost for that hose, I got it actually a little longer to hold more fluid, was around uh, 50 and 0.43. So, 
I also got uh, new ground cables because they were pretty bad. Um, I also got a positive cable last summer. Um, that was a hundred and some, but I will not add that because that's on a different time. But that cable I still used because it was really, really nice and it wires up perfectly. I got a throttle linkage kit, which is the Mr. Gasket one, I believe. I have it down here. Um, I can't see that. Mr. Gasket throttle cable. It's universal. Um, bulk battery cables, lugs. All that was around 113, 113.02. Um, and then moving on to... What is, what's this? I also had to get sealant. This was 918. And then for... We got a new radiator. Not this time. But we also did get a new radiator. Um, but we got the Dodge radiator hose from the 1989. Um, I got an exhaust band clamp, a serpentine belt, and a micro V belt, I believe. And that was 4780. For some reason, that doesn't seem right because I think that was more. But I think I returned something on there as well. Um, Star solenoid on the firewall. On the uh, passenger side, that fender, that thing melted and broke uh, thanks to the 6.9 cranking over so many times. So that was 20.63. I know I'm rambling on, but I'm just trying to knock out these receipts. Um, on this one, what do we got? That was another exhaust clamp, but I got the right one, so that's okay. I got relays, inline fuse. I got a wiring harness, warning lights, and heat shrink tubing. This is all for electrical for the fans and stuff. That was 42.08. Um, I got two radiator hoses. Um, they're both Daco's. And then the Dodge one was Gates for some reason. Uh, but the other two for the lower one was 2510. And I thought the radiator was supposed to be on here, but I believe it's coming up soon. Um, I got another case of Mercon 5. That was one of the worst deals I ever got. That was 91.8. That drives me up the wall sometimes because uh, I got a better deal at Napa. So uh, I got plenum gaskets for the air intake uh, tube, uh, right where it goes in on the uh, top of the where all the air would go in. I got uh, those were new. Those were 11.88. And then, um, universal joints. Oh, boy. I got all new universal joints and a radiator, and that was 435.67. The radiator wasn't bad. That was under 300. 435.67. And that equals up to, I believe, 10,532.39. Um... I believe there are some other receipts that I am missing, but those that are missing, I believe, are for stuff that, like, differential fluid and stuff, which are not necessary in, if you're just doing the swap, um, but, uh, some other tools I had to get for this, I'm just going to mention these, I'm not going to add these up, I got, uh, grinder blades, um, oh, I forgot this one. This one is for the connect the radiator hoses on the lower end of the truck. That was 15. There we go. Okay, so now I got that added up. Um, I also had to get some uh, tools because the impacts were uh, not keeping up, like the batteries and stuff. So I bought another impact lithium battery, and then I bought saw blades. Um, I got all 15% off when Menards had their thing, but I won't add that up because you might not want to buy that stuff. So, I believe we are total is 10,548.13. And after adding that up, see here, that includes the Cummins, the, uh, all the rebuild parts, radiator, fans, everything. All the fluid, um, uh, motor oil I won't count because that varies greatly. And then, so that's kind of what it costed me to do my swap. Um, see here, we're going to downsize this so it ain't as bad. But, um, 
with these brands, it actually helps pretty, pretty well. Um, so that's what it costed me around, which is not bad. Um, my truck was a rolling chassis, and I put it all back together technically. Um, now to add the price of the truck, that was around $5,800. That is what the truck cost up to date, and that's what the truck would have cost if it was a power stroke that was in this mint condition or a Dodge Ram. Uh, I will be right back. I'm actually going to look up a Dodge Ram price right now. Okay, so looking at the prices here, they are for 2009. It is around 15,800, and I don't think this, I think this one's. Oh, this is a five nine. That is around 8,700, and then this one is for 24,000. And it is crazy of what these Rams cost. I was looking at buying a Cummins. Actually, I'm looking at this one now. I was actually looking at buying a Dodge, but um. With paying this price, it is just not reasonable. And I liked my truck. It's got a great height. Um, I'm very, very satisfied with it. It, uh, yeah, but like twenty three thousand, and then you got four thousand. But you gotta be careful because some of these are V8s. But uh, like this one is seventeen thousand. It's so we are in the market now to where we could sell this truck for almost twenty thousand dollars. Um, I don't tell anybody I'd make profit on this, but that is what the truck is about worth now. Um, am I selling it? Absolutely not. This truck is, uh, the boss when it comes to going up hills and stuff. It sounds amazing. Um, as if for any upgrades to the truck right now, I don't really see any upgrades happening. Uh, we do got to fix our fuel gauges, and then I actually do have an antifreeze reservoir coming in today. But, um, yeah. So, actually, let me subtract all of this now. We're going to subtract 5,800 if you already have a truck. Um, and then we're going to subtract at least 1,200 in additional costs that I have put into the truck. Um, so that's probably what it's going to cost you in an OBS Ford setup to rebuild a, uh, or to do a common swap into a Ford like that. Now, if you don't have to rebuild the transmission, uh, 3,400, that equals, hold on, did that minus it? It did minus it. So now you're in the $5,000 range for a conversion, um. So that is really great. Um, there's no intercooler or stuff, anything, so you got to add that to it. Also, no air conditioning. So if I would have added the price of putting the air conditioning back in, which would probably be around what I estimated when I did the 600, uh, that would have been around $7,000 to $8,000 to put the air conditioning back in. Plus, it is in the way of the fans, and it's an older truck, and it doesn't need it because... Windows are still cool. So, yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this 30-minute uh, long uh, video on me talking about my uh, common swap and uh, what it costs. Um, again, the brands I use for the uh, truck. Um, I do trust these brands. I didn't go with D-Stroke for a reason because they do not support OBS Fords. But it's all good under the hood, if you know what I'm saying. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, write them down in the comments. I do check the comments daily, so I should get an answer to you pretty quick. Um, again, all common swaps are different, so one thing I do is one thing you might not to do, or one thing you do is what I didn't have to do. Um, like, if you're putting it into an F-250, you're going to want to do a Dana 60 swap, uh, like Up North Outdoors did on his truck, because the Cummins is so heavy. Uh, I already had the Dana 60, so I didn't have to add those additional costs. But um, also, Up North Outdoors didn't do like uh, tack gauge or RPMs or anything, those gauges. Um, which I don't know why, uh, but I did it on my truck, and those are the costs of that. So his costs are going to be lower on his truck compared to my truck. Um, but we still have the standard cab, but he also has a lift kit on it. So, yeah. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, give her a thumbs up. And uh, if you're new here, subscribe. New subscribers are always welcome, and it's free. And uh, I'm Clyde, and uh, thank you for watching.